All right, all right, YouTube. Super happy to be here for Clear Vision Wednesday. My name is Claudia Mühlenweg. I'm a natural vision improvement teacher, the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method. And today we want to talk about a very powerful tool that's officially known as a field divider. Um, we call it nose card because it looks like a card on your nose. And we will talk about a little bit how to make one of these. But before that, I have a little slideshow I want to walk you through. But it looks like this little device and um, that you have to, uh, you know, you need some kind of frame. But we will talk about how to make one of these. It's really simple. It doesn't cost much money. All right. So before we dive in further, let me share my screen. And I would actually have to bring my slideshow up. One second. I'm going to share my screen. I just have a few slides because I always feel that it's really helpful to see some visuals. I'm a visual learner and if I don't see the pictures, it's usually, it's not as clear for me. So I, maybe you're the same way. All right, I'm gonna play this and it should show up on your screen as a full screen. So the topic today is how to use a visual field divider to improve saccades or saccadic eye movements and fusion. So there's different things we can do with this tool. I do want to say right away, uh, this is a medical disclaimer. I'm educating you. I'm not replacing any medical doctors or eye doctors. So this is really important to know that vision educators are not doctors and that we are teaching from our research, our own experience and working with clients and our education, but we are not doctors. So quickly, let's look at this, this graphic. Um, so basically, we have, assuming you have two eyes, right? Assuming you have two functioning eyes, and even if one is a little more challenged. We have what's, what's shown here in the dark green area is basically the overlap of what both eyes see. That's the area where you have 3D depth perception vision. And then in the outer areas, what you see like the light purple, that's only seen by the left eye. And what you see in that light green is only seen by the right eye. So basically right in the outer periphery, we only see, we only have vision in one eye, but in that middle area, which is about um, 100 degrees total, roughly. This also depends from person to person. And roughly we have at least 180 degree of a peripheral vision. We are not chameleons. We can't turn our eyes. We can't see behind us. But uh, if you have healthy eyes, you have at least 180 degree of peripheral awareness. Again, on the very, very sides, this was my topic last week. Uh, we don't have color perception. We only have movement perception. All right. So this is what really fascinated me. This is actually a picture from an old school poster that I have hanging behind me here. And that it really blew my mind. So when you look at, when you look at the red and the blue areas here, so see how, when, let's look at the left eye, right? So the inner, inner part, the nasal kind of part of that retinal space, see how it's connected to the right hemisphere of the brain. And the right eye, you know, where you see the red, the right nasal or inner, inner uh, vision, the inner visual field is connected to the left side of the brain. <clears throat> and then the outer areas are processed in the same side of the brain. So in other words, each eye's vision is connected to both sides of the brain, which to me is really fascinating. So <clears throat> when we look at this, uh, when we use this example here, we will see, um, let me actually use an example that you might've heard about. If you've never heard about it, don't worry. This is a so-called Brock string. It's basically a rope with some beads on it. And when you look at this rope, if you have two healthy eyes and you have fusion, depending on which bead you look at, right? Imagine this is just one string, like a rope, like a clothesline with some beads or some clips on it. And if you look at whatever bead you look at, if your eyes are working properly, you will see one bead, but everywhere else, you will see two and you see two strings because only where we focus do we see one object. And that's what gives us depth perception because each eye is in a different space in the head. And our brain usually you know, ignores those double images where we don't look, we don't really notice those. Um, so again, if you use a Brock string, depending on where you look on the string, that's where the lines cross. And this is again, connected to that graphic I showed you just before. So when you look at a Brock string, right? And assuming you're standing on the left, the top eye is the left eye in this picture, right? So think of yourself looking uh, from the left to the right of this picture. So let's see, you look at that bead 
And in this example, I was showing like, let's say one swing looks more faint or weaker or less prominent or more shadow. And the right eye, the first right between the eyes and the bead, because remember the other side of the brain. So the string that's shown that you see on the left when you look at the Brock string, if your right eye, let's say is more near side or more far side or has blurry vision, that string will appear on the left side. But when you behind the bead, right, that's the, the temporal vision, the far vision, remember how that same side, when we look in the distance, it's the same side. So that fainter string will look like it's on the left side before the crossing point and after the crossing point, it's on the right side. So this is, maybe you don't quite get this yet, but this is, this is the fascinating part of the brain, that part of our vision, the nasal, part of the vision is actually flipped over to the other side of the brain and anything that's in the distance is on the same side. Um, so the, here's this graphic again, just to show you again. So to remind you, it's, it's quite, to me, this was really mind blowing when I first learned about this. So, so let's look at when we, if you use a field divider and in this example, you only see one side of the card. Um, this is me uh, <laughs> quite a few years ago during my teacher training but I have a, a, green a green neon color on the, on the left side and I have a pink color on the right side. So what would happen if you, you know, looking at me here with this card, if I were to turn my, keep my head steady and turn my eyes all the way to the left, I would only see the pink, right? That you don't see in the picture right now. In the, but I would only see pink. And if I moved my eyes all the way to the right, Basically, my left eye would see the green, my right eye would just look somewhere in the room, like the right eye wasn't, wouldn't really see any color. So only the left eye would see the green. And again, if I looked all the way to the left, my right eye would pick up the pink, right? I hope that makes sense. So turning your eyes, I have, don't have a photo of me doing this, but turning your eyes to one side while you keep your head steady, you would only see one of the colors, obviously. Now, the goal of this card is that you look straight ahead. And when you look straight ahead, what you will see if you have fusion, again, both eyes are participating, what you will see is kind of a flipped image. Like on the left, you see the kind of a floating, the card is probably not as sharp because you look in the distance. So it will be more like a blurry, kind of not as outlined, a sharp outline, but it will be kind of a blurry floating space of pink on the left. And on the right, you will see the green. So it's flipped from the, what the actual card looks like when you look in the distance, if you were to cross your eyes like crazy, right? And like kind of look at your nose, then it would be the same side. So I hope this makes sense. Um, and the, the gap between these two cards and how thick they are, that depends on how big your card is, how far away in the distance you look. So the gap between the cards can be smaller or larger, de again, depending on where you look and also the size of your card. Mine in this picture is about the size of a business card, but you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. Yeah, you can play around with different um, sizes. So just to recap, when you look straight ahead with both eyes, you see these colors flipped. If you only look to the left, the right eye sees the pink. If you only, if you look to the right, the left eye would see the, the green. So I have, in terms of the, so this is all about fusion, how your eyes interact with each other. And I'm gonna have two little videos that I recorded a while back which is while I was performing the long swing, which is a practice that is also explained. And my very first, I think in very first episode here, I show you what the long swing is. We're not gonna go into detail what the long swing is, but basically you're moving your body or you, you can also just move your head in a 180 degree circle. And the idea is that your eyes are looking straight ahead and they're kind of, you know, think of like brushing you know, so you're not looking. You're not looking at one thing in particular. You're letting your eyes kind of move along as you move your whole body or your head from left to right in a 180 degree circle. The first video I will be showing is without the nose card, and there's always a tendency for your eyes to want to kind of look ahead, so the eyes might not be center. And the second video is with me, um, me using the nose card, because when you use the nose card and you look into the distance, you see those two colors. So you know that your eyes are pretty much looking straight ahead versus if you only see one color, you know that your eyes are either lagging behind with your nose, right? They're like kind of getting stuck on something or they're jumping ahead. So let's, this is this video here and I hope it's playing right now. Um, let's see. 
So you see my little eye movements here, my little jumps as I'm blinking and breathing and I'm turning in a 180 degree circle. I hope you can see those little, what we call the cardiac eye movement. It's little, little jumps that they're making. And then I have another one and my eyes are pretty straight, but when you can see when they go that they're looking a little bit toward the left side here, right? They're jumping a little bit ahead. So now I have this video and my card here looks very beaten up and it's, I think it's orange and green. It's not pink and green. The colors, we will talk about the colors. It doesn't really matter as long as they're bright and different and you have, you're not colorblind. So then, you know, red and green would probably not be a good choice. So let's look at me doing it with a nose card and you will see that my eyes are more centered and that the eye movements are a little smoother. See how they're a little faster. I hope you can see the difference how they're overall a little smoother and a little faster. So yeah, I'd still, when I go to the left, there's a little tendency to go, but see how they're overall way more centered and smoother than without the nose card. And I've been doing the long swing. My eyes have pretty good movements, but even when I was filming this video, I was like, wow, even my eyes definitely can really benefit from using this field divider when I'm doing the long swing. Um, and I'm gonna, the slide tour is pretty much um, over. So this is just a picture of the, you know, more of a close-up picture, but basically you need some kind of frame, a glasses frame, you need a, a colorful card with two different colors and you need some kind of putty. And so let's, let me end the, the slideshow here. And so here I have, I have a card right here. And I, again, you can use different colors. It doesn't matter as long as they're both bright and they're different so that you, when you look that you are aware of both of them. And um, so the putty I used here is called blue tech. So you want something that does, it's not like Play-Doh would get hard and crumbly. You want something that stays smooth, but also that is not like crazy sticky when you touch it, right? So this is not sticky. It doesn't, but it holds, the, it's not pretty, but it holds the card in place. And if you can't find, this is some, this is actually a frame I bought in Germany. Um, but you can, if you got look for sports glasses or I actually forgot to bring my little, basically these glasses frames usually come with like interchangeable, you know, for cyclists, cyclists use these glasses where you, this particular set, and I forgot to bring it over, came with like gray, orange and clear ones that you can easily, they're meant to be ex exchangeable. So they're easy to snap out. Um, but you can also, if you can't find one of those things, I um, you, you don't want to spend a lot of money. These were just, uh, I don't know, a couple of bucks. I can't remember. Um, so they look like so they look like this. Um, but if you can't find those, you know, you can also use what I usually use for my occluder glasses. You can also just use some cheap sunglasses from the dollar store and pop out the pop out the lenses. I do like it better when it doesn't have that frame in your way. So that's what I like about these because they just. They're just very light. You, they're not, you really just see the nose card. You don't see any kind of frame of the glasses. So that's my preference. And I think if you search for Google uh, for cyclist glasses or sports vision glasses or something, you will probably find some of these um, inexpensively. And maybe they even have them at the dollar store. So that's one way um, to do this. And I want to talk a little bit about the different colors. So sometimes, let's say one eye is, more challenged and the other eye is the overpowering eye you could also play around with different colors maybe even use black let's say the eye that's always overpowering or that has better vision gets black in the eye i've done that with cataracts where one eye is like kind of more suppressed or with amblyopia for instance the eye that tends to be more suppressed can get the bright pretty color you know could, this doesn't have to be yellow it could be pink green any kind of bright color and then the other eye gets black so that's a really great way. And you can even angle it a little bit toward that eye so that that eye can get more of a stimulus. So I hope that makes sense. And again, you can make these bigger. I've had some bigger ones when, when clients didn't get it. Um, I also, you know, I can do it with a really tiny one. So the exact size is not really that important. And here's what I usually do. So usually sometimes what happens, you know, I get clients, they put this thing on, right? And they can remember green is left, pink is right. And they're like, no, green is left, pink is right. I'm like, and I want them to kind of get the idea that it's flipped. So what you can do in that case is usually just, you know, you, you use a finger either you, if you teach somebody, you use, you show that or you do it yourself. You just look at the finger and then you, okay, now I only see pink. 
Now I only see green. And so you will go back and forth. And at some point you just let go of the finger and then usually it's like, oh, now the colors are flipped. Usually it's just like, you know, like stop the logic and, and knowing what the colors are and you just look. And then usually what happens is that the person sees it uh, the right way where the colors are flipped. And if they don't just do a few rounds going back and forth, going back and forth, stopping in the middle. And again, in most cases, I, I think I only had one client where it took a lot longer um, to have that experience. So that's what I would usually recommend going back and forth. What else do I want to talk about before I look at questions? Yes. So my friend, Irene, Irina Castle has um, from Overbound Athletics, she has created this beautiful eyesight trainer, eyesight clarity trainer. And this is a device that gives you lots of different options for occluders in different sizes. So you can have, you know, this is, was originally done for sports vision, but this works really great to like, when I look at last week's training on peripheral vision, so she has these little, um, you know, you can block your vision like this, you can do one eye at a time, you can do a really big one to really stimulate your outer peripheral vision, right? All the way on the sides. Um, and this one, right now it's not available yet, but I know, let me show the, the single one here. So if you, and instead of building, instead of having those occluders I showed you from the dollar store, you can have this. And I know that she's working on an attachment for a nose card where there's going to be a little clip here and it comes with a nose card and you can angle it easily if you need to angle it to stimulate one eye more. So this is not available yet, um, but she told me that it should be available by um, early 2023. So if you're interested in getting one of these things, again, right now there is no nose card available yet, but it's coming. So that could be, then you don't have to, you know, worry about, this kind of low tech um, putty version. But this one costs you, depending on how much these glasses cost, maybe, I don't know, anywhere from like five to 10 bucks. And this is obviously a high, lower, a higher investment. So let me look at questions. Let's see if there's any questions on YouTube. Oh yeah, I see a lot of comments here. Um, yeah, basically, you know, you know, you need a, um, oh yeah, Lana said I use a twist tie and a hair clip. Honestly. Like I'm not, I'm not an inventor at all. So if somebody comes up with a better way to build these, I'm all for it. Maybe you can even use one of these binder clips and connect a card. But again, this is what my teachers did. And I'm like, okay, this, this is easy. You just use some putty, putty and stick your card in there. It's easy. Um, let's see if there's any questions here. Yeah, I got these colors. Honestly, it's like, I got these big sheets of neon colors like poster board at Target. Uh, you can, you know, you can get any, I like neon colors because they reflect the light more. Um, and you ought to be careful. Let's say one eye is really overpowering. So let's say you have one eye with a cataract and maybe you have black on one side. What's also helpful is to have the eye that, you know, let's say I want to stimulate my right eye, have the light from the window hit that side. So if you have, you know, like a window and it's coming from the side, you might initially not get the two colors because the, the, the other side is in the shadow. And so that's also important to, to know, like, you know, either have equal light or if you want to stimulate one eye more, make sure that that eye, that the light hits that side of the card really, really, really well. Um, a question, where else would we use a nose card? So the nose card is just, first of all, if you work with Fusion, I'm working with a client right now and Fusion is a challenge and the nose card is really easy for her. But anything like the chopsticks or the hot dog or any of those things are really challenging because I mean, the amblyopia, one eye doesn't want to participate. So this is a great way to, first of all, remind yourself that both eyes are participating without effort. It's really a good way. If you get this, you're like, okay, I know both eyes are looking because for instance, in her example, she always feels it's just, it's always just one eye looking. I'm like, no, both eyes are looking because otherwise you wouldn't see both colors. So that's a really good way. And you can use it on walks. You can use it around the house. So especially if you want to practice your fusion. And again, this is just one aspect of fusion, right? This doesn't mean if you see this, that your fusion is perfect. Like with that client I, I mentioned. Um, it's also great to use with a shifter. So if you have a printed shifter or a, um, a shifter like this, it's really good because when you use it with a shifter, again, you notice that you see those two colors with a little gap. So you know that your eyes are not doing this or that, which tends to happen. Um, you can use it for any of the movement practices for the sway, 
And for fusion practices, again, it's really helpful because it teaches you that you're using both eyes. So that's, that's what I use the nose card for. And maybe there's other things you can use it for, but I use it mostly for movement and helping somebody understand fusion practices. Let's see. Um, if your dominant eye sees the paper the most, is it just a matter of making that side block? And that's a great question. So you can, yeah, you can play around with different colors with a different lighting. You can also tilt the card a little bit away from the dominant eye. You know, that's, that's what the, this, this device will be able, there will be a hinge where you can easily move it to the side. So that could be a way to, or let's say you have a squint um, you might be, you might want to shift the card a little bit, you know, not have it straight in the center. Obviously, that would be the eventually the goal, but you might want to shift it over a little bit. The colors I find are really, really helpful to have a really stimulating color on one eye and then the black on the other eye. Um, is this practice helpful with late in the day double vision? Yeah, that could definitely be helpful. Yes, for sure. Yes. Uh, let's see if there's other questions. Uh, I don't see any other questions regarding the field divider. So it's one of these tools that not a lot of people use, but I find it extremely helpful. And again, when you looked at the long swing, um, you even saw that my eyes were making just finer movements. I only had one client in all my uh, almost 12 years of teaching that her eye movements were worse with a nose card. They were actually better without it, but that was one people out of over a thousand people I worked with. So in most cases, and this is what I wanted to say earlier. So what, what I did in order to show you that video, all I did, um, you know, you can hold it this way or that way. All I did was I did the long swing, used my phone. You don't want to look at the phone because if you look at the phone, your eyes are not going to make any movements. So you want to look above the phone and basically you, you do the long swing and you just look above the phone. And so maybe film yourself, not in sunlight, because then usually the shadows are so harsh that you don't see your pupils. You want to do it kind of inside or in a, in a shaded area. And then film yourself with them without the nose card and see, see what your eyes are doing. It's like there's nothing better than looking at your own eye movements, um, you know, versus just feeling them. And so notice what happens. So, and it's interesting. My eyes always wanted to go, when I went to the left, they wanted to look a little bit ahead. But to the right, it wasn't such a it wasn't such a big deal, and my right eye is dominant. So that's a, to me, it's always so interesting to discover these things that our eyes are doing. Uh, no, you're not looking at the paper exactly. That's super important. I mean, I could cross my eyes like crazy. You know, it's actually very hard because it's so close. I cross my eyes, and usually, either the the let's see, what do I have on the right? Yeah, if I cross my eyes and I see pink on the right and left on the green. Right, so you do want to look in the distance so that, so that you get those flip colors. Hope that makes sense. For sure, and it doesn't have to be far distance. You know, even if I just look at the computer, I'm just look at the computer, I already see the gap in the flipped card. So again, depending on how big the card is, it's not that sharp outline I had in my picture. It's really more like a floating space of color. It's kind of gradated. So yeah, it's not going to be that sharp cutout that I had in my presentation. Yeah, definitely. And if you don't see it, maybe make it bigger, you know, angle it one way, just explore, do the thing where you follow the finger. Usually at some point it's like it clicks and you're like, okay, now I see it. Okay, I don't see any more questions. It's a really great tool, really. And uh, yeah, Karen said she found buy glasses for 25 bucks on Amazon. I mean, you might even find them cheaper. Sometimes the dollar store has them too, you know, like in the, especially in the summer, this is a good time to look for those things. All right, I'm gonna look at my um, Clear Vision Club. So we have a question. I have amblyopia in my right eye. Would I put the black on the left? You would put the black on the left side. So even though the image is flipped, you the, the eye that has, you wanna put the bright color on the eye that is more challenged, has a cataract, has amblyopia. You wanna put the bright color on that eye to stimulate that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, awesome, yeah, I don't see any more questions. Oh, there's a question. Just as I was saying, there's no more question. Would this be helpful for both nearsighted and farsighted? Yes, absolutely. So. For the, the long swing is a great practice, no matter if you're near or far side. It's basically teaching you to make these little small eye movements. 
And like I said, film yourself and notice when I filmed myself, I was, I was like surprised when I did the editing of the video. I was like, wow, my eyes, my eyes make pretty good little movements, but with the nose cut, they were even better. And that again, except for that one client I had, everybody else's nose uh, movements were better. Obviously you want to eventually not use this nose cut, right? I was jokingly saying in my Instagram reel yesterday, remember that Steve Martin movie? I don't know that Steve, remember, I forgot what it's called, but he invented some kind of, some kind of weird device. I think the movie was in black and white. Um, I really don't remember the title, but, and then everybody, he got a huge business success and then everybody got cross eyes I, I, from that device. And then he got sued. I, I, I watched that movie a long time ago. I'm horrible with me memorizing movie stories. Um, but basically, you know, you obviously the goal would be that eventually you have this smooth saccadic eye movements without this card, but this is a really great way to train it, especially if you film yourself and you catch that your eyes are always looking ahead or they always get stuck on something. So that's, it's a great tool to do that. And again, if you have fusion problems, it's a, the nose cut works really well to help you like get that, get both eyes involved and also work um, help with avoiding the double vision. It's, it's like one of the introductory level um, fusion practices that we can do. It's easier to do this than it is to see, um, you know, the hot dog, the floating hot dog or some of those things. Okay, let me see. Um, should we do this? Yes, okay, you guys have great questions that I should have thought about. Yeah, I recommend all, all of the vision practice without glasses. And sometimes if you don't see the result, you can always do it with glasses, but glasses have a tendency to eat, limit your eye movements more. And so here, while we want our eyes to be, right? I, call, I always say, stay with the nose, meaning you don't wanna do that when you, look, but our eyes within that little space, you know, even if I move my eyes a little bit left and right, I see, still see both colors. So the eyes have a little bit of wiggle room before you only see one color. And with glasses, especially if you have astigmatism correction, only the center of the glasses is sharp. So there's a tendency to kind of freeze your eyes, you know, like have your eyeballs like frozen in space. Because the saccadic eye movements are teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny vibrations. So when we do the long swing, yeah, you can see them, right? They're like these kind of jumps. But even if you were just looking at one point, you still make little vibrations. It's like they're very, very, very minor, but the glasses tend to kind of lock your gaze in. And that's one reason that your vision gets blurry. So you want your eyes, you want them to allow, you want them to move. So think of saccadic eye movements as the heartbeat of the eyes except that we want the saccadic eye movements to be really fast and we want the heartbeat to be slow. But like the heartbeat, they happen automatically, but the healthier the eyes, the better your vision, the faster those little movements will be. And the, the long swing is just a really great, or the head swing, head swing is the same thing, except that you don't move your whole body. So in the head swing, you would just move your head like this, right? So that's the difference. It's really hard to film yourself doing the, seeing the eye movements of the head swing. You definitely want to do that with a long swing where you move your whole body and you're pivoting on your feet. So the head swing is not good for filming yourself, but you can definitely use this with a shifter. Let me see. Um, um, I don't know this question from Jill, that's not related to this topic at all. So um, eye movements will help with dry eyes for sure. Yes, you want your eye movements to be smooth. So we have, I did a different class on the different eye movements. We have tracking eye movements, we have smooth pursuit, we have saccadic eye movements, and we have vestibular ocular eye movements. So we have four different types of movements. The saccadic ones are just one kind of type of movement. Saccadic ones, when we do the long swing, we want them smooth. But let's say I'm looking at my screen, I'm looking over here and I'm looking over there. I'm not gonna do like the smooth movement. I'm just gonna jump, you know, the saccadic, it's basically like little snapshots that your camera makes. And remember how your vision is best in the, in the center of focus. This was another class I was teaching how we only have perfect vision in our phobia. So the faster your little movements, the more perfect clarity snapshots you make. And in between the saccadic eye movements that are in a healthy eye, it's about 190 milliseconds between one saccad, saccade and the other. When they do that little, in that little space where they move, you don't have clear vision. So it's like clear vision, move, clear vision, move. So imagine the slower they are, the more blur space you have between, if that makes sense. 
Um, so the faster they are, the better. But yeah, your circadic eye movements doesn't mean that they're always smooth unless you're reading. If you're reading a book, right, there would be smooth little jumps really like in the long swing, except the long swing is the bigger one. But if you're just looking around, I'm looking to the, my guest house, I'm looking to my computer, then I'm just, my eyes would jump to different places, if that makes sense. Um, great questions, you guys. And you know, I always say also try it out with glasses on. I mean, I film yourself and notice the difference. I'm all about experimentation and seeing because that's how you discover stuff, right? If you just follow the rules, once you understand the principles, then it's good to play around and, and then discover what happens. So um, yeah, I think we are out of questions. So next week I have an amazing guest. So make sure you join me next week on July 13th. Um, I'm gonna come to a close here. So follow me here on YouTube, recommend the channel to other people. Follow me on Instagram. I do lots of free stuff on Instagram too. I'm holistic vision coach on Instagram. And if you're interested, I have a membership called the Clear Vision Club. If you're interested in joining that Clear Vision Club or one of my programs, I have a 21 day to better eyesight experience program that is a three week course. And then I also have a bigger program called Naturally Clear Vision that is kind of teaches you like the bigger course. That teaches you everything. The 21 day course is kind of a great way to get started if you don't want to commit you know, if you just want to see how this works and if it works for you. All right. Um, I see you next week, YouTube. And now my Clear Vision Club tri tribe and I, we're going to be on Zoom together when we stop the YouTube live. So if you want to be behind the scenes with me on Zoom, and if you have guests, we always have extra time with our guests where we do a little Q&A, then email me at support at my holistic vision and find out if you want to join the Clear Vision Club. It's my monthly membership. And it's a really amazing community. All right. So thank you so much, Christy, uh, for watching on YouTube. I appreciate you guys.